YouTube, Lizzie B here. Um, I'm at the park today. I decided to change up the scenery and just wanted to do something different. Um, well, you know, I did a video at the park before, but whatever. Um, you know, it's shortly after Thanksgiving. It's a week from th after Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys all had a great uh, holiday and enjoyed yourselves with family and friends and getting really good food. And um, in case you didn't notice, my uh, teeth are different. I did take off the hot pink um, braces. I thank you all for your <laughs> comments. Um, I definitely wasn't going to keep them anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm glad that I <laughs> that I got rid of them. I think ultimately I just wanted to make a video where I kind of talked about my adventures going to the orthodontist. But um, either way, with this video, I wanted to um, talk about a little bit about my Thanksgiving um, holiday, I guess. Unfortunately, it got off to a bad start. Um, I had to fly home for a family member's funeral. Um, I had a you know family member that that passed away and um, you know it was so close to Thanksgiving that I you know went out came out for her funeral and then just stayed all the way through the holiday and um, you know it was really really sad that my relatives passing was very um, sudden she was in good health we didn't expect it at all and so you know it really just left behind a lot of us you know a lot of us were left feeling confused and, and hurt and and just upset um, one thing that I will say about losing um, you know someone close to you or someone you know in your family is that it really does bring to mind or you know what it doesn't even have to be a person that's close to you or in your family just a death in general um, it really does make you kind of prioritize certain things it makes you really put things into perspective and do a lot of reflecting and I have uh, you know on the heels of this death I have really been doing a lot of reflecting and um, sorry if I'm shaking a lot with the camera I'm holding it up I don't have a stand but um, either way I, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately um, as with the death that I you know I talked to you guys about earlier in the year um, you know, it's it's interesting with this one. I'm thinking about I'm putting different things in perspective. With the first death uh, that happened in March, that you know I I talked to you guys a little bit about it on video um, before. With that death, um, I thought a lot about you know making sure that the you know the person that passed away felt like they were loved, and you know even though I knew that they did, it it you know I still kind of wished or or wondered I guess whether they you know knew at all times that that I loved them deeply and that kind of thing with this death I thought of something different it made me question how much I prioritize spending time with my family and how much I prioritize a uh, family in general you know what I mean um, you know I, I I don't make a lot of videos very often because I'm working on my career I'm trying to build my career and it takes work it takes a lot of time but lately I've been kind of wondering especially after this funeral and, and then with Thanksgiving you know how much time am I devoting to my family and just building connections with loved ones and so this kind of leads me to you know kind of what I want to talk about with this video and it you know I'm, I'm really with this video I really want to talk to people who belong to groups that use um, policies like disfellowshipping and excommunicating and and pretty much shunning um, you know I want to talk to people that belong to groups that do that as you all know I was formerly a Jehovah's Witness and um, as such we you know Jehovah's Witnesses have a policy called disfellowshipping where if someone is no longer a Jehovah's Witness or they no longer um, conform to the doctrine or the policies or whatever they are completely alienated from their family through a policy called disfellowshipping and um, this policy if you know please look up shunning I, like I've talked about it enough I think you guys all know what it means 
um, it's, you know, when you don't speak to someone, you don't acknowledge them, that kind of thing. And the thing with disfellowshipping and shunning in general is that, you know, it doesn't matter if the person is family, it doesn't matter if they live in your own household, that kind of thing. Um, to a large extent, you are really cutting this person off. You're shutting them out of your life. And with, um, with this funeral that I recently went to, it just made me think about all of the people who, you know, have relatives and family and friends that may have passed away and they never never got a chance to say goodbye, tell them that they love them, or really even spend time with them while they were here. And I could not imagine what that, um, you know, what that would do to a person. You know what I mean? Um, with this funeral, I really thought a lot about that and, and thought about how thankful I am that, you know, I did get a chance to spend time with this particular relative before they passed away. And although I didn't really, um, you know, I didn't live nearby and see them a lot, um, I know that, you know, that this person felt loved. You know what I mean? Like, I know that they felt loved by, by our, us, her family. So, um... Yeah, one thing that was interesting too at the um, actual church was that um, that I found to be interesting was the sermon that was given. There was a sermon that w was given um, at the funeral and it just really, to me, it kind of reinforced um, some of the qualms that I have with religion. And um, this goes for all re religion. The one thing that the um, preacher had said was, you know, it's lovely that all of you have turned out to, you know, express your love and, and appreciation for this family member. But at the end of the day, um, if you ever want to see her again, you need to do A, B, and C. And so he, he proceeds to kind of lay out um, kind of like a just a set of requirements a list of requirements of things that um, is needed for us to see this family member again and to me it just it sounded like I don't know if extortion is the right word but it definitely sounded like she was being held ransom by God you know what I mean and um, you know it just felt like he should have been recording that on video and asking for money because the words if you ever want to see this family member again shouldn't come out of any person's mouth um, you know especially when people are grieving you know what I mean people are desperate this is you know when somebody is has passed away people are at a very low and vulnerable point in their lives and if you hold something over their head as if you have the ability to you know be a gatekeeper to allowing this person be seen again or not you know what I mean it just to to do that I think is is really I want to say opportunistic it's um, deceitful it's insensitive and it's just wrong on so many levels and you know that was the part of the sermon that I didn't appreciate I mean there was a lot of lovely things I personally if at a funeral and maybe I don't know maybe this will this will be proof I guess a living will and testament at my funeral at any funeral really I have a preference but I can only control what happens at mine and even that I can't really control but just talk about me <laughs> you know what I mean just talk about the deceased talk about how you love them or how you feel about them that kind of like just just do that tell stories you know that day should be devoted to that that day should not be devoted to making people feel like you know feel guilty or feel like they owe something to someone the only thing at that point that's needed is that person to be able to in a sense make their peace or you know just grieve amongst loved ones for this person you know it's a collective day of grieving and that that is okay you know like you should feel like this is the place that you can you know cry and and hug loved ones and and let the people who are alive know that you love them that kind of thing that that is what a funeral is for in my opinion um it's not a day to get lectured 
or <laughs> you know like I, I would never want anybody to feel that way if there was anybody in the audience that took what this preacher said to heart I wouldn't want that you know and then on top of that as someone now who in a sense is a little more enlightened than I was before I didn't really take his word seriously I don't know um, if I will ever see this relative again I don't know what will happen in the afterlife and um, you know and that's okay <laughs> you know that, that's okay I don't have to believe every single word of the Bible I don't have to believe um, and even then it doesn't really the Bible doesn't really give a lot of detail about what happens specifically in the afterlife in terms of how you see your loved one again what heaven is like what hell is like you know all of that like or maybe it does I don't know but you know what you know what and I'm sorry let me clarify when I say maybe it does I feel like the Bible is open to so much interpretation that when I say maybe it does I mean that you can interpret it however you want to um, and if you want to apply a bunch of details to that that's that's on you but personally from what I've read it's not it's not very specific and descript descriptive to the degree that a lot of people place um, that a lot of people um, make it out to be I hope that makes sense <laughs> Um, ultimately this is a man that has never died that was given this sermon he's never died <laughs> to his knowledge or to our knowledge um, he hasn't been resurrected from the dead to let us know what happened in the afterlife um, you know there's so many things <laughs> that he doesn't know and and I say that because I don't know these things you know there's a lot of things when it comes to the afterlife I feel like religion really really kind of um, makes people believe that they have um you know the keys to heaven <laughs> that they that they are the gatekeepers that they're the ones to let us know if you know if we're doing all the right things to get where we need to go and um when pe so many people hold that to be true if someone passes away and you use whatever power you claim to have um to manipulate people into thinking that they got to do whatever you want them to do so that they can see this dead loved one again it's definitely exploiting people's feelings and um, you know just really really that was just one part of the whole situation that or of the of the funeral process that I was just not feeling and it just reminded me it was kind of like reinforcing for me some of the problems that I have with religion because it's not just Christianity that does that it's a number of other religions and um, you know so so th that's that um, one thing that I really just like I said want to get back to in terms of um, with this video it's just you know tell your loved ones that you love them while they're here um, I often think about how when it comes to um, the afterlife how much religion in general just focuses so much on afterlife that we don't really think about the present and I think personally that 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 is a tragedy and you know God should he exist um, that would kind of go against against God <laughs> you know in, in terms of as far as how I view God like I, honestly I think that God values our life here on earth and if you know he wants us to appreciate it you know what I mean one of the things that I've learned and I know this is gonna be like kind of a weird uh, tangent but one thing that I learned from having a pet <laughs> yes a pet um, is to appreciate life you know what I mean um, my dog is like the happiest spirit I guess in life you know you take you give him a piece of cheese and he's like on cloud nine you take him to the park and he's smelling every flower and just looking at the sky and just rolling in the in the grass and you know everything is just wonderful when you know myself or my husband comes home um, he's just the happiest person in the world like there's no doubt in my mind that he loved us and he showed us that every day and so you know that kind of in a way inspired me to try to be that way when it came to 
um, how I live my life and I try to do that and I don't always fail sometimes I um, you know can be really depressed and and depressing and just everything sucks and that kind of thing but ultimately I do try to appreciate life because I know that it is a gift and I don't think that that's something that is really taught in religion despite the fact that they really emphasize being happy no matter what like there's really this culture of positivity that that they try to um, you know enforce in religion but it's like this false positively positivity where you know you're expected to suffer you're expected to kind of live your life in a way that you don't want to live it <laughs> but at the same time you have to proclaim that you're like the happiest person ever and you know there are people who are being forced to kind of deny everything that they are who they are and but be told see this is you know this is what you have to do for the afterlife so deny who you are live a life that's a lie you know hide all of the crying smile and and be blessed and you know how are you oh i'm blessed everything is blessed um don't acknowledge any feelings of negativity suppress everything but um fake being happy because you know this religion makes you so happy and kind of discard this life and just focus on the afterlife because that's going to be so much better and if anything to me what that says is that you don't appreciate the life that you have now and that, that whole idea of shunning also is very um, you know kind of goes along with that because anybody <laughs> anybody with a you know healthy level of emotion would not want to willingly shun family members for having different thoughts and opinions. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's one thing to not want to speak to a family member who is an abuser. <laughs> you know, that's one thing. But, you know, if I say I like pickles and you like bananas and you belong to the banana religion and now you can't speak to me, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? And ultimately, that's what people are being forced to do or be people are being coerced into doing and you know it's just wrong so to me i just feel like there's so much emphasis put in that in the afterlife that people don't realize that they're throwing their lives away and that in itself goes against god because would god has god created us to throw our lives away <laughs> is that it it's like oh what once i get through this bs i'll get to the afterlife it's like no live this life <laughs> isn't that the point you know it, isn't that the point i get so many comments from current jehovah's witnesses where they say um Lizzie B, I know you think you're happy. <laughs> I'm just like, what? You know, that don't, I know you think you're happy. I know you think you're living your life the, you know, the way you should and blah blah blah, or or the way you want to. But you're gonna be punished for that. Okay, I'll take it. I, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's gonna happen as soon as I die. You know, um, you don't. <laughs> so if you know, if that's the risk I'm gonna take, if my living my life in the fullest. In, in this moment and, and enjoying myself and enjoying my relatives and speaking to them regardless of their beliefs as long as they're not hurting anybody and, and supporting them and showing them that I love them while they're alive. If that is, um, you know, if that's gonna cause me a lifetime, or not a lifetime, but like a eternity, I guess, of punishment and afterlife, I'm willing to take that risk. Um, one, one interesting dream I had a long time ago, years ago, I think I was still an active Jehovah's Witness when I had this dream. Um, I had this dream that I was, um, I had died and that wasn't abnormal for me. I've had a lot of dreams where I've died <laughs> and usually the, the, everything goes black and I wake up or I go to another, like my dreams are often like, you know, different mini movies where I'll just go to the next dream and but this dream was different in that oh my goodness oh my god I just saw a, a groundhog oh my god do you see it look at him wow okay I'm gonna stay up here though I don't want him to come up focus okay um what was I talking about uh so I had this dream I died and usually I die in dreams and I just, you know, that's it. But in this dream, I died and I was in the afterlife. I, I was in some kind of, it looked like a paradise. It was beautiful. Everything was green and lush and, um, you know, fountains and beautiful, huge fountain marble and just 
pockets of people here and there kind of hanging around. I don't know if they were wearing tunics or anything, but it was just like a lot of really, you know, chill people. And I'm just looking around like, wow, I finally made it. And I'm not gonna look. So I'm hanging out by this fountain and this guy comes up to me and he's like, um, hey, you know, let me show you around. Cool guy introduced himself. I don't know that he's any of the archangels or anything like that. He just, you know, went to introduce himself. So he does <laughs> and um, he starts to show me around and it's beautiful and there's a lot going on. And then he takes me to some um, building or whatever. And I go inside, it looks like, kind of like the apartment that I um, grew up in. And we go up to some, um, this bedroom and all these people are just hanging out in the bedroom, just kind of dark. Everybody's watching this movie. Um, on either it was a computer screen or a TV screen but either way I was able to see the screen and I saw that the movie that they were watching was really really uh, like inappropriate <laughs> you know it's just it wasn't a porn or anything like that but there was violence people were cursing just kind of living this really um, I don't know it's just just something that Jehovah's Witnesses wouldn't watch. So I remember looking at, at it for a little bit and just kind of being surprised and being like, you know, I turned to my, um, I turned to my guide or whoever he was and I said, um, you know, why, like, what is this? <laughs> you know, what are, what are they watching? And he's like, oh, you know, he's watching a movie and blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm like, well, this doesn't seem appropriate. This doesn't seem like something, you know, that people would be watching in paradise and he looks at me and he's like who said this was paradise and the feeling that i felt of just like all the blood kind of drained from my body i was just completely um kind of blown away and and just shocked and horrified and just like oh my god where am i like if this is not paradise where am i what's going on and i remember waking up and just feeling just really horrified you know it was like a nightmare and um i'll never forget that dream because that was the first time that i questioned that everything that i knew that i that i knew or was taught about the afterlife could possibly be a lie <laughs> you know it could be different I don't I don't know for sure nobody really knows for sure we can refer to the Bible all you know all day long but at the end of the day the Bible is a book written by men thousands of years ago there's plenty of those and um, so you know it really kind of got the wheels turning but you know ultimately I, of course I kind of stayed in the religion a little bit and, and just drifted eventually but it was still something that kind of changed the way my brain thought about you know what I'd been taught and you know when I think about that now I think that there's so many people who've given up so much on a basis of so little information or and it's not or even a ton of information that is not necessarily correct and it makes me wonder because when I think about the fact you know I've had two deaths this year and in both cases I thought to myself like I wonder if this person knew how loved they were um, I think about this episode of Leah Romini's um, Scientology um, show uh, if you haven't had a chance to check it out please check it out but there was this episode and it was like one of the first ones that I had seen and it really devastated me the episode had um, Leah Romini um, or in the episode Leah Romini had a guest on it was a woman I think it was a woman or it was a, a son but either way the, the woman had two sons they were twins all three Scientologists the boys grew up in the religion the mother uh, you know had gotten into it or whatever and raised her her two her twin sons in the religion one of the twin sons started to question a religion and you know how that works so he questioned the religion and he um he left and the thing about it I think they were identical twins as a twin I know that there's a you know I have a connection with my twin like I love you know I love my twin I love my sisters I love my siblings um, but there is a certain you know kind of closeness that you have with with a twin <laughs> and um, in their case they were identical so I'm sure that you know maybe increases exponentially but either way 
with this um oh my god that thing is coming further and further out. i'm sorry i know it's okay i'm gonna focus 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 so um yeah so the twin brothers were really connect i'm, I'm moving i'm sorry y'all i can't i love animals but the i can see that thing just climbing up all right i'm gonna walk get this walk on walk to my car so in the episode the, the twins the twin brothers um one of the twins decided to leave and he um he uh you know kind of forms his own life and goes to school and um the other twin stays devoted to the religion stays with his mom and i forget what happened i think it was like the um i don't know if he killed himself or he died the twin had left but the mom at some point eventually woke up and i think before then her and her son were shunning and so they hadn't spoken to him they you know for i don't know if it was a number of years but it was a long time and when this when this person that they loved and cared about supposedly loved and cared about died they were devastated they you know and and it's bad enough to lose someone anyway unexpectedly but to know that this person died thinking that their family didn't love them that is devastating i could not even begin to imagine i think i had to turn that episode off so that i can um like when I'm when I'm really really upset I take naps so I think I may have taken a cat nap after that like I like I couldn't you know it's just it was devastating that episode was devastating I it hit home and it, it hits home and it just makes me realize that it is, it is such a blessing to be alive with people that you love let them know that let them know you love them let your family know that you love them and do not let religious religious leaders extort your belief in an afterlife you know because they can and they will when that when that man was saying if you ever want to see you know this family member again there was a part of me that was like you know what if i believed him i would totally <laughs> i would totally uh do do the things that he's laying out go to church every sunday read the bible all the time you know blah 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 so on and so forth um tithe all of that i would do it if if i believed him i would do it and there are so many people that do believe him and that's why they're doing it you know um one of the ways that the family member that brought my mother into the Jehovah's witness religion they told her she they would um she would see her son again her son had passed away. They told her she would see her son again. And, you know, now you got two generations of Jehovah's Witnesses on the basis of someone extorting her emotionally. <laughs> you know, I mean, I remember when I was a Jehovah's Witness, they would tell us, um, you know, the best time to reach out to people is when they are um after someone has died you know um look in the the what is it look in the obituaries and you know look for names of people who have passed away and find their relatives and you know knock knock you're on it you're at their door and and you're extorting them emotionally if you ever want to see this person again you know um so so that's it i mean i i guess the point of this whole video is tell the people that you love that you love them while they're here um you know if you can and if you belong to a religion that's telling you to completely give up members of your family and people that you love and and don't tell them you love them while they're here and don't speak to them and cut them off completely even though you don't want to if you're if you belong to a religion that's telling you to do that you better be one million percent sure that the afterlife is about to be popping and that god wanted you to completely shun and cut off your love from family you know like you got to be sure that god wanted you to throw your life away I, you know what i'm saying like does God really, that's what God wants? Like, are you sure? You know, is, is are you going to get to the afterlife? It's going to be so popping. <laughs> it's going to be so, popping means cool, y'all. Popping means fun um, for the old people. <laughs>
like but like you got to be sure that it's just so vibrant and wonderful and just excels this life so much more so that you're happy that you threw this life away be sure about that and also be sure that it's okay to not appreciate this life because i promise you that woman on um scientology she would give anything to have her son back i'm sure she would um, and I personally know people who have killed themselves who were, um, you know, who, who were Jehovah's Witnesses because they were depressed and they felt like they were never doing enough and nobody loved them and their lives didn't matter. You know, that's another thing with religion. I've thought about doing an entire video about it is that there's, you know, I mean, I, I talked about it through this video that they kind of tell you that you, that life, this life doesn't matter. So if you're telling, constantly telling people that this life don't matter, it's all about the afterlife, then yeah, people are going to kill themselves. <laughs> you know, people are going to be like, well, let, why, why not just get it over with now, you know? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just making this video to say life does matter. Your life matters. The, the lives of your family members and friends matter. Let them know that. Let them know that you love them. And, you know, ne like appreciate life. Be like my dog. <laughs> you know, go outside and roll in the grass. Like life is beautiful. Earth is beautiful. Appreciate it and appreciate those around you. And if you don't, you're, you're wasting it. And if you are, you better be sure you're wasting it for a right reason. So that's it. Um, I, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I'm just, you know, filled with a lot of emotion because um, on top of the fact that I went to that funeral, I did get a chance to um, to celebrate Thanksgiving with my family. I have not been able to do that for a long time. Like it's been years. And um, so it was fun for me. I went to actually, I went to three different Thanksgivings because, you know, I have a large family and my sister, um, you know, my sister's both of them were um, cooking or, or two of them were cooking at their houses. And so I went to my twin sister's um, for her Thanksgiving. And then my sis my other sister who was um, hosting for my dad's uh, side of the family. And then I went to my aunt on my mom's side of the family. And she, she always every year has a huge Thanksgiving. Everybody in my family is on the East Coast. So I didn't, I don't really get a lot of opportunity to see them, especially um, during the holidays. Why is that? so dark oh no um so this was a great opportunity for me to be able to do that and so I took advantage of it and I'm so glad I did because I got a chance to tell my family that I love them and to spend time with them and to let them know that I appreciate them it's hot in this car Whoo, it's hot all right so I'm gonna hurry up and finish this video how was your Thanksgiving let me know um and, you know, thanks for watching. Sorry it's been a while since I made a video. I'm going to try and post this up. As soon as I hit stop, I'm going to go home and just post this up and stop playing around. So um, that's it. Uh, comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And talk to you later. Bye.